Hello and welcome to my video on making small arabesque trays using a slab construction method. These arabesque trays will have a printed pattern uh, that looks like uh, arabesque design. Uh, and first you want to start by wedging the clay. Uh, doing this removes air bubbles and makes the clay uniform and solid throughout. And that's good because when we flatten it down, if there are air bubbles, they would show. They would show through. Uh, I flatten the clay using a cardboard roller. Any cardboard roller that is used in shipping or in spooling printer paper, uh, that will just work. Uh, it should be firm. You don't really need a wooden rolling pin. This is just a view from the top. I like to take the time to get it as flat as I can before I flip it over. And when I flip it over, I also rotate it 90 degrees so that the clay will stretch in a different direction, perpendicular to how I was stretching it before when I roll it. When you roll clay, it is being squeezed and therefore stretched out and made uh, wider. Now here are two uh, metal bars that I got as part of a furniture system that I didn't really end up using. And they're really useful as guides for uh, flattening the clay to a certain thickness and checking that thickness. Sometimes when I'm working I have to pick out bits of plaster or bits of powder uh, that are left in the workspace. These guides help me make sure my clay is uniformly flat but they're a bit thick, so I remove them when I'm ready to go thinner. And so now's the time when they get removed and we go to the final thinness. I want to get the slab of clay flat so that I can press my patterns into the clay which I do also using rollers. Um, a slab of clay is a flat sheet of clay. So when you hear the word slab, that's what it's referring to. Constructing items, constructing works of ceramics using flat sheets. And the nice thing about slab construction is it's very quick. Once you've flattened your slab, it's just a matter of pressing something into it and then cutting it out and dropping it into a shape. When rolling out your clay, you can use guides, but you can also feel it out. You, you should, you'll get used to uh, having a feel for the clay and having a feel for the uh, space. Right now what I'm doing is using one of my patterned rollers and I'm printing out a pattern into the clay and now I'm going to flip it over. And this clay is a little bit used, so I'm going to modify the mixture. I sometimes call it a recipe, but I'm going to modify the mixture and add some more ball clay so it holds together better. But this clay is fine for demonstration purposes to show you how I do my work. I'm just cleaning out little bits of the clay here and there. What I'm going to do now is get one of my metal forms, or sorry, one of my plaster forms. I'm going to lay it down. I'm going to cut out a space about two inches around the outside of this rectangle shape. I find using a kitchen knife is very effective and very easy. They're laying around. They tend to be everywhere. And at the same time, uh, this knife cuts pretty straight uh, and it won't bend on you. So if you have an old kitchen knife laying around, use that uh, for sure. That's one really great way of doing this. All right, now I want to gently get rid of the plaster mold, put it aside. And this is the surface that is going to be facing upward. The surface I print first is always the downward facing surface. And this is the surface that's facing upward. And with this surface, we want a star pattern centered in the middle of the clay. So 
So we're going to switch to a top view here, and I'm going to center, center the board using the pattern that I know is opposite this pattern. And then we get the big star shape in the middle. Uh, I believe this is a 12-point star. So we have that in the middle, and uh, I realized I didn't use the right center point. So I'm going to go ahead and fill the rest of the pattern with uh, whatever I think might go nice. There we go. The pattern doesn't have to be perfect, it's just nice to have a focal point in the middle. Invariably, the outsides of the pattern will get messed up or distorted. But as, as long as the inside is nice and clean, uh, that will be something aesthetically pleasing to look at and uh, more attractive to the buyer. So now I'm gently dropping the slab into the plaster form. And uh, it has a tray shape in the middle because uh, I did a plaster mold of a styrofoam tray that is a rectangle shape. And that allowed me to um, have plaster molds that are quick drying. Right now I'm just cutting the edges of the clay off and I'm trimming the parts we don't need, the excess clay we will set aside and we can recycle and reuse. So the rest of this process is pretty straightforward. It involves just looking for details and things that need to be cleaned up. One thing I notice is that with my rollers, sometimes a piece of it, the line pattern uh, falls off or gets removed. And so I use this tool to imprint the same uh, line work in the clay just so that if I have a pattern, it looks complete. Uh, right now the edges are really important, so it's important to smooth those over. Uh, all you need is a bit of water and your fingertips. Your fingertips make a great uh, tool for smoothing out edges of the clay. It's important to me to get a nice, smooth uh, surface. Uh, you can always add water and smoothen out the edge of the tray or plate. Uh, but you want to make sure that it's straight, it's uniform, and it's aesthetically pleasing. Smoothing the smoothening or the final part of the clay, uh, the final part of the process, I should say, is a little bit tedious. It uh, takes just as long to refine the edges uh, and uh, clean up your work as it does to as it does to simply uh, drop the bowl and create the pattern, or drop the tray and create the pattern. Refinement is always uh, a part of making artwork that is as long or tw sometimes twice as long as simply the initial 90% of the, the work or 90% of the detail. Most of the foundation or the majority of the substance of an artwork comes together really quickly, but then refining that work 
is something that goes really slow and takes as long or twice as long. With my finger, I'm just smoothing out some of these edges, uh, making sure that they're low without making fingerprints or marks in the tray. Uh, that's one thing I don't want to do is make marks in the tray by accident. Here with this knife, I'm going to scrape off the edges. Uh, just removing excess material one more time. I like that this knife has little grooves in the edge, um, being a kitchen knife. Um, obviously good for cutting meat and vegetables, but also good for making little striations in the clay that can be smoothed out later once the tray is dry. One thing I always want to do before I set the tray to dry is separate the edges of the tray from the plaster base, even though it's plaster and the clay should pull away. Sometimes uh, there are little notches or grooves where the clay gets stuck to the plaster. It can happen, and when it does happen, it creates a small problem. Uh, where little pieces of the tray edge can break away as the work dries. If the clay has enough room to separate or it has the freedom to separate from the form as it dries, then the little bits should not break away, at least not on account from sticking. This is just uh, a look at what the tray looks like when finished. Uh, and in here, you can see the edges. This is a bit of a different edge. I made these edges with a fork, uh, which would be done before it dries. But this gives you an idea of what the pattern looks like when it's done. And also uh, how after the tray dries, I do put I rehydrate it a little bit and I put little feet on the bottom uh, so it stands up off the surface of the table. You can see the four legs on the bottom of the tray. I usually put four legs on a small tray and the same with big ones actually. Uh, the four legs are little rectangular pieces uh, made out of clay that are scored and slipped and attached to the base, raising it up about two centimeters. Well, that's my video on making an arabesque tray using uh, rollers and the slab technique. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Please follow me on Instagram at ngmceramics. That's nigm ceramics, ngmceramics with an underscore.